Today I'm going to be showing you the worst 10 rides at Universal's Orlando Resort so you don't have to waste your time going on them. And make sure to stick around until the end of the video so you know which ride is the worst. Number 10, Pteranodon Flyers. This ride is perfect to kick off the list. The theme of the ride cars themselves are cool and you go on a flight around Camp Jurassic, but that's it. You also have to be at least 36 inches tall and no taller than 56 inches tall unless you're accompanied by a guest list between 36 and 56 inches tall. So it's very limiting on who even qualifies to ride. Number 9, Skull Island Reign of Kong. It's on this list mostly because of what it could have been compared to what it is. You start off by going through a well done and even a bit scary ride queue. You then get your 3D glasses and head onto a safari bus that drives you around the little loop outside, if the weather permits, and through the gates of Skull Island. From that point on, the rest of the ride is pretty mid. It goes indoors and is just on 3D screens until the end. Number 8 is Jimmy Fallon's Race Through New York. Race Through New York is not much more than you could expect it to be. If you're a fan of Jimmy Fallon and The Tonight Show, the attraction queue is pretty cool and has some interesting memorabilia along with games to play while you wait, and you can even catch a live performance or two from the Ragtime Gals Barbershop Quartet. Once it's your time to ride, there will be an announcement made, and the lights will change colors to the color of the group that's being called. The ride itself is a 3D motion theater where you race Jimmy Fallon through New York, although half of the ride doesn't even take place in New York, and is overall pretty boring if you aren't a fan of Jimmy Fallon. Number 7 is Ripsaw Falls. Although the theming on Ripsaw Falls is done very well and it's one more way to cool down in the hot Florida sun, I'll tell you why you want to stay away from it. The ride vehicles are very tight and if your legs are long enough it'll be very painful for you to sit in for the entire ride. I'm 6 foot 2 and I've never had a problem on any other universal ride hurting my legs or my legs not fitting properly on them. Also the ride is very rough and bumpy most likely due to the age of the ride. Number 6, Kang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl. Kang and Kodo's doesn't offer too much uniqueness. It's an aerial carousel that's similar to other rides of the same type. The only thing that this one has that I haven't seen on too many of this style of ride are motion sensors that trigger different characters to say different things based on the height that your cart is flying at. Number 5, Carousel. Carousel is your typical merry-go-round ride that you'll find at your local mall fair, or carnival. It isn't any different compared to the ones that you've seen or been on before besides the theming. So unless you've ridden everything else that you want to go on at the park, I would not spend the time that I have riding this. If you're enjoying the video so far, please make sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments what your least favorite Universal Orlando Resort ride is. Number 4 is One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish is another aerial carousel similar to Kang and Kodo's Twirl and Hurl. The reason that this one ranks lower than Kang and Kodo's and Carousel is because it sprays a jet of water at you. It's hard to avoid the water because there's multiple different water sprayers all at different heights. Number 3 is Storm Force Accelitron. This isn't anything special at all, it's just another teacup ride. The theme isn't all too grand and you would definitely be better off using your time at Universal going on a better ride that you can't find at every amusement park or carnival. The only reason I think anyone would want to go on this is if they have family members going on the Incredible Hulk coaster right next to us and they had somebody in the party who couldn't or didn't want to go on the Hulk. Number 2 is the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride. The High in the Sky Trolley Train Ride is number 2 for multiple reasons. The ride is barely entertaining and not very immersive at all. Most of the time you're out in the open air slowly moving around the tracks and there isn't much more to see than if you were just walking through Seuss Landing. The ride seems neglected and forgotten about like almost everything else in Seuss Landing. The ride always seems to be delayed and when it's not delayed the wait time listed is almost always less than you end up waiting for it. Number 1. Fast and the Furious Supercharge Fast and the Furious Supercharge is by far the worst ride at Universal's Orlando Resort, and the worst ride that Universal has ever made. You start by walking through the best part of the ride, 
which is a really cool themed queue with different cars that were featured throughout the Fast and Furious movies. Once you're done with the queue, you're excited and ready to board the ride, you probably to expect to be getting in a fast, sporty car, but no, you'll be boarding the party bus instead. If that's not a letdown enough, after the bus passes one of the first rooms, everything switches to CGI, and horrible CGI too. There's a point where Vin Diesel's hanging onto a helicopter and he's the same size as it. If the bad CGI wasn't enough to make you dislike it, maybe the random blasts of air directly to your face or the fact that the story makes less sense as the ride goes on will convince you otherwise. Thank you for watching the video and sticking around to the end. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future travel videos.